Hello pandas! It's been a minute since we did an in-depth scrapping video, but it feels like the perfect time for it. So today we're going to be tearing down one of my favorite things to scrap for a number of reasons. The humble barbecue. So, scrapping a barbecue fast and safe, make more money in less time. Barbecue scrapping hacks? Let's get into it. The barbecue is what got me into scrapping in the first place. I was puttering around on my scooter one day and I saw somebody tearing one of these apart in a back alley. So being curious, I approached him and asked what exactly he was up to and uh, he explained the whole situation to me and I was enchanted. It seemed brilliant. It seemed too good to be true that you could make decent money tearing these things apart. And it didn't take him very long, so that I am happy to say, started my journey into scrapping. And maybe, just maybe, I can do the same for somebody else. So to get started, the tools we'll need are pretty simple. You want some kind of Phillips head screwdriver. A drill obviously is faster. Um, some kind of grips, my favorites right here. Um, these ones are kind of a backup just in case. And of course, a hammer. Yes, it's one of those types of scrapping videos. The, um, the scale is just to see what we end up with and because we're doing it safe, safety means gloves and goggles. Oh, and I forgot one more, a secret tool that'll help us later. As in right now, the magnet. See, you need to use your magnet to make sure what you've got is an aluminum barbecue. They mostly make them out of steel these days because it's a lot cheaper, but aluminum was the best choice and still is because of its heat retention. So, the steel ones are probably not as efficient, not as good, but these ones are the ones that people are throwing out all the time. Now they often have a stainless steel plate on the outside here, and you'll be able to tell with a spark test. Yeah. So most of this is going to be worth money to us, and there's even a couple little uh, brass gems hidden inside that we'll get to. Now, there's a couple different ways to get started, but the end goal is to have all of the different pieces separated and sorted by material. So, I find that because it's standing up nice and like it's right here, this is a great time to get stuff like this off. There is a screw inside, but the screws, because of the heat and all the oil and the burnt food and stuff, these screws are not going to come out easy. So, we got our friend Mr. Ballpeen here. Super simple. Hey, look, there's another one there. Now look at that nice clean hole. There, you see? Much faster. Now another thing you'll notice is on the back here, it's got these little clip-in pins. That's what the grips are for. You can just grab at them, give them a little pull, and they slide right out. Yes, you can add that to your steel pile if you want to. Now that's a great start. Let's have a look inside. Now these are sometimes just the, the lower grade steel, the tin shred mixed whatever, and that'll just go into your whatever pile. But these ones, these are actually cast iron. So those are a higher grade and pay a little better. Uh, put those with your brake drums. Now the next thing you'll notice is the inside of those pins that we just took the little clips out of, those are pushed through here and holding the whole thing together. Pretty simple to take out, hammer, Sometimes they need a little encouragement. And I like the ball beam because of the striking force, but sometimes you do want to fork a cart with your hammer because it just lets you pop it right out. Another tiny piece of steel. If you're throwing them all in a microwave or something, great, goes in there. There. Nice. Now sometimes they just don't want to come out, but aluminum, especially cast aluminum, is actually quite brittle. We can use that to our advantage. There, see? Now, we can use the forks on a hammer to grab stuff out of there. I'd already removed this one, so it was super easy. Get some leverage, get it out of there. Steel. Now, here's my favorite part of the whole job. We're going to be removing the bottom half, and it's usually attached by four bolts. And you can see them buried underneath all of this crustiness. They're right there. See? Now that's what I'm talking about. Those ones are basically impossible to get out with a screwdriver. Sometimes you have to dig to find them, but they're there. Sometimes they're in here, sometimes they're here, but you need to find them because that's what the ball peen's for. There's a million different ways to get that out, but because aluminum is brittle, 
if you strike it right on the head of the nut, it'll create enough bounce and just snap it right out. Super easy. Kind of fun. Now here's something I haven't actually mentioned in other videos, but I did say fast and safe. So, ear protection. I know it can be a pain in the butt, but aluminum can be very loud and you will damage your hearing, so it's good to take care of it. Just a PSA. Now back to the fun part. Ow. Fun and easy. Now you will end up with a whole pile of crusties. They're just burnt food. But they can make a mess. And now we've got one clean piece of cast aluminum. The top piece we are going to want to remove the screws, and you can use the brittleness of aluminum to just bash them out, but honestly, these ones aren't usually that bad. You can, like a screwdriver, I think is best. A screwdriver with the right size pin. The last thing holding this on is the temperature gauge. Most barbecues have them, and super simple to get off. Got it. We'll just set those aside for now. And that gives us one piece of stainless steel. And a second piece of clean cast aluminum. No, it doesn't look clean, but that's what it's called. Now the rest of this, <sighs> some people will just leave shells like this sitting around, but that's not responsible scrapping, and I don't endorse it. Plus, there's other good stuff to be had in there. So, handles. Come right out. Screwdriver. Now this faceplate was actually bending super easy, so I suspect it could be aluminum. Let's check. Nope! That's your second piece of stainless steel. Now the rest of this is just steel, and they don't care about the plastic on the bottom, so I think it's fine to just leave it the way it is. It's a convenient box shape to throw all the rest of your stuff in. Now the other thing you'll find is one of these. This is where your brass is at. I'll just tell you straight up, these things can be a pain in the butt to take apart, and the value is not necessarily always there, so personally, I would just cut the hose and throw it in a dirty brass bin. Now, if you do want to spend the time, you will increase the value of that piece of brass by about double, and while not necessarily a uh, well-paid use of your time, micro-scrapping can be therapeutic, cathartic, fun. So. I'm not going to tell you not to. Now as far as the teeny bits go, a couple broken pieces of cast. Add that to the bin. This thingy here. Pop that out. This is probably made of zinc, but they always just call it aluminum at the scrapyard, so who might argue? And this thing, there's a good chance that's brass. Clean it up a bit. You'll see that it is indeed a chunk of brass, so... Pop that part out, and this, eh, you can put it in the steel pile if you want to. Throw all the rest of the little bits in. And just for the sake of completion, these little nubbins are the ones that held the top on. If you do a scratch test, you may find that they're brass. So, go ahead and whack them off if you want to separate that. God, that hurt! Be warned, though, you may have some difficulty removing them. Now, we might as well answer what everybody's surely wondering. How much is it worth? What we're left with today is some cast iron, some stainless steel, a pile of regular old tin, and cast aluminum. Not to mention a few bits of brass. I don't have the math in my head, but I do have a fish scale, so we'll see what they weigh, and then I will put the uh, today's prices on the screen right here. That's just shy of 20 pounds of stainless steel. 24 pounds each for these 
cast iron, so 48 pounds. That's 60. 60 pounds of tin, 39 pounds of cast aluminum. So that's obviously the big price, but the rest of it is nothing to, you know, totally ignore. It's still money. And a couple little bits of brass. Now, just for fun, I've got another one right here. I've got my phone here. I'm gonna set it on the stopwatch, and we're gonna see just how long it takes me to rip this one down to all of its components. Ooh. Well, uh, let's get after it. Three and a half minutes. Now, that includes the fact that this one had a window and I did take the time to smash the little bits of, uh, as far as making sure this thing fits in the truck. So that was worth a total of in three and a half minutes. And hey, since we're already here, let's have a go at these things and see just how long they take to take apart. Okay, so it didn't take as long as I thought. Here is our results. From the first barbecue, total of 8.7 ounces, plus this piece of copper, which we're just gonna weigh as brass, why not? So nine ounces, plus these things, which were uh, almost an ounce of aluminum. So you know what? I'll just throw those in there. And then from the second barbecue, that was a total of 7.5 ounces with this little like 0.2 ounce copper clamp off of the hose. And then these pieces came out of both of them. They've got like these little like press fit things on. They're very difficult to get apart. So I don't really think they're worth it, especially when they weigh a total of mm, maybe two ounces almost. So I'm just gonna throw those in the dirty brass pile and now I've got some clean brass. Now when all was said and done, I did bring in a few extra tools. So. In addition, your magnet, your ear protection, and your cutters. But that's everything you should need to make, I, I don't need some money from barbecues. That actually loses quite a bit of weight when you clean it up. I haven't checked the numbers, we'll have to compare them and we'll find out together, but you might be better off just leaving a long tail on them and calling them dirty. So that right there is everything I know about scrapping a barbecue fast and safe. I hope this has been helpful, maybe even inspired you to get out there and smash some stuff, but I would like to point out the cardinal rule of scrapping. Always keep in mind that scrap value is the lowest possible value for anything. So if you could sell it, if there's any chance you could sell it for any money, that's always better. If there's anything I've missed, please say so in the comments down below because it's helpful not only to me, but to everybody else. And uh, yeah, definitely check out the comments because that's where all the cool kids hang out. And with barbecues especially, because they make a mess. But in every aspect, make sure you clean up after yourself. That is to say, leave it better than you found it. Now keep doing the thing.